In a little over three weeks, the Nebraska Cornhuskers will kick off their 2021 season. And the fans are waiting and anticipating for this program to take that next step. That next step in trying to reestablish themselves as a blue blood in college football. I get that Nebraska is technically a blue blood in college football already, but in my mind, they are only historically a blue blood in college football. Recently, this program hasn't been relevant at all. In fact, I personally don't think that this program has been relevant in nearly 10 years or whenever they last went to a conference championship game. That was last time they had some relevance to them. And Scott Frost was brought in to change this program and turn and turn it around. And if, after three seasons, the Huskers are only 12 and 20, which when you look at 12 and 20, you look at that as abysmal not only abysmal for Nebraska standards, but abysmal in general. But when you look at the 20 losses under Scott Frost, a majority of them have been by one possession. So it's been them not being able to finish games. And if they were able to just finish games, you could probably cut the losses that Nebraska has had so far in the Scott Frost era nearly, if not in half. Because I can think of about at least six or seven games that were very close games. And if one thing goes differently for the Huskers in those games, they win them. Now, the defense really carried Nebraska last season. As the offense, it struggled throughout the season. Now, their defense is going to be experienced this season. Nine returning stars, so they have experience on their side. Cam Taylor Britt, the leader of that defense, one of the best corners, not only one of the best corners in the Big Ten, but potentially one of the best corners in college football. And the Huskers have gotten back JoJo Doman for this season. And they have Will Honus as well, though he is injured right now and he's, and he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. They were 50th in total defense last season, which top 50 is great, but I'm not sure how much of that kind of stat matters when the Huskers only played eight games last season, when a lot of teams played 10, 12 games last season even potentially more than that, like Clemson played, I believe, 14 games last season. So I remember the ACC, they started earlier than the ACC Big 12. They started earlier than the other three power conferences and other conferences started early as well. So you could arguably put an asterisk next to that stat, but I think it's still important to note that they were a top 50 defense last season and they really carried the team last season. So offense, this is what is the main concern for the Huskers going into this season. They lost their leading receiver in Wando Robinson at the transfer portal. Could this be the Adrian Martinez coming out season? Because the fans are just waiting. I'd say even non-fans, just fans of college football in general, they are just waiting to see that Adrian Martinez from the end of his freshman season. Because at the end of Adrian Martinez's freshman season, that was his best college football that he's played. And... We're just waiting to see him return to that form. And what's interesting about that is that was when Age Martinez was surrounded with some talent. And I think this season, Martinez is surrounded by talent as well. 
as there is a lot of hype around around Toure, Omar Manning. Now, Omar Manning, he opted out of the season early on the season last year. So I anticipate that Omar Manning is going to have a big season. I also think Xavier Betts is going to have a good season for the Huskers. Because I think we saw his, I think we've seen his potential a couple times already, especially in the Penn State game last year. So I think Xavier Betts is going to, I'd say maybe, maybe 700 yards receiving possibly. I think Toure is going to probably have about maybe a thousand left. Especially teams that go on the road, those highly favored teams that go on the road. It wouldn't surprise me. We saw a lot of upsets throughout the first maybe four or five weeks of the season where we see a lot of these teams go on the road and they can't adapt well because they are trying to get back or they're trying to get used to it again. But I think the Huskers would will win this game. I had this undecided, but I was leaning it towards a win. But it wouldn't surprise me if they if they really lost this game. But I think they'll win this game. But if I had to guess right now, I don't think it's going to be a pretty win. I'm gonna say it would be probably like a maybe 38-34 type of win, maybe. Fordham, that's a guaranteed win. Buffalo, I'd say it's a guaranteed win as well. So the Huskers could realistically be 3-0 and heading into the showdown against Oklahoma. And this is where I have the Huskers taking a loss, their first really guaranteed loss of the season. I just feel like Oklahoma, they're going to be one of the power teams in college football again this season. 
I'd say Spencer Rattler is the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy this season. Oklahoma's always going to be the favorite to win the Big 12. So I'm picking the Sooners to beat Nebraska. The question is, though, how are they going to lose? Are they going to compete with them from start to finish? Are, is it going to be like the Ohio State game last season where the Huskers, they moved the ball at will on the defense? They were, the old line was really bullying that defensive line. Or is it going to be like a 52-7 to loss with the Huskers in that game? So I had that as a loss. Now, the next game at Michigan State. Now, I have this as an undecided game, and the reason is, well, because I don't know how they're going to respond. I mean, I think they're going to lose to Oklahoma, but I'm just not sure how they're going to come out and respond to the next game. And I think that's going to depend on how they lose. I mean, if they lose miserably, is it going to be a season breaker for this team? But if I had to guess, I would... Lean that towards a win, but I'm not going to lock it in as a guaranteed win. Now, at home against Northwestern, I think that is going to be a win. In Nebraska, they should have beat Northwestern last year, but the offense just really struggled. They really could never seem to find their step that we were hoping for last season. So I have Northwestern as a win. Now, the next two games, Michigan and Minnesota... Minnesota's on the road, by the way. I'm undecided on both those games. I think they'll get one of them, but I don't think they'll get both of them. And if I had to lean towards which one they were going to win, I would say it's the Michigan one because Nebraska is going to have the home field advantage. And I think when we're at the earlier points of the season, I think home field advantage will mean a lot this season. Plus, Michigan's coming off of a bad season last year, and I think Jim Harbaugh is on the hot seat. As opposed to going on the road to Minnesota, that could potentially be a trap game. I mean, let's just say that potentially the Huskers, they only have one loss, and that's Oklahoma going into this game. Many would anticipate Nebraska wins the game, but it could just be a trap game, and Minnesota comes out and takes it from them. Now, their next win is a, well, their next game is against Purdue, and I have that as one of my locks, as one of my guaranteed wins for the Huskers. They'd be coming off of a bye, so they will be rejuvenated and refreshed. And then next, in Ohio State, that is a loss in my mind. I mean, I feel like Ohio State's going to be, believe it or not, I think Ohio State right now would be the favorite to win the national championship. I know that Alabama always reloads, but I think Alabama is going to look very beatable this season. Now, Ohio State, they've got, I think they got the best receiving core in college football, the best D-line in college football, maybe even the best defense in college football overall. So that'll be a loss. And then their final two games of the season, after a after another bye at Wisconsin and at home against Iowa. Now, kind of like for Michigan and Minnesota, I think they'll get one, but I don't think they'll get both of these wins. And I would lean it towards winning against Iowa because Nebraska has gotten so close to beating Iowa these last three seasons. And it's only a matter of time until they finally win against Iowa. And I think if there was going to be a year where they would finally break through that obstacle, I think it'd be this season against Iowa. Because they've, I believe the last three, the last three showdowns against Iowa, the margin of victory, the margin of victory, like combined for Iowa, it's been, well, excuse me, the total amount of points they've won by, I believe is 12 in the last three games combined. So I would, if I had to guess, I think Iowa would probably lose to Nebraska here, and I think that Nebraska would lose to Wisconsin. So as far as the highest potential ceiling is concerned, 
I would say the highest ceiling would be eight and four, nine and three. And the lowest ceiling would be seven, five, six and six. So that's at least a bowl game. And I think that, I mean, I mean, it's progress. I mean, it's not the progress that you're hoping for. Well, I mean, well, I know that you want the progress, but I'm, I'm talking like you want to see them start winning nine, ten games every season. This is at least progress. At least they're getting to a bowl game. So as far as the schedule I just went through, at least that's bowl eligible. So that's making progress, but it's smaller progress than what you're wanting is what I'm trying to say. So that is all I have. Comment your thoughts down below, like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you next time.